Hello, my name is Natalie Gordon, and I work with the School Children's Trust section at the Utah State Board of Education. And we have put together this training to help local school boards understand their responsibilities, leading school community councils through the School Land Trust program. The School Land Trust funding is very unique because it's the only state funding where the use is driven by the local school community council and solely approved by the local school board. It is imperative that responsibility to review and approve the plans for funding be taken very seriously by the local school board. If plans are approved that do not meet the criteria set forth by the legislation and rule, it falls back on the local board to answer for their actions. Utah State Code states that the local board president is required to ensure that the members of the local school board have been provided with annual training on the requirements of the law regarding the school land trust program. The permanent state school fund has grown exponentially. The balance of the fund on June 30th, 1987 was $15.2 million. On December 31st, 2018, the balance was $2.25 billion. For the 2018-19 distribution for the School Land Trust Program, $74 million was distributed to Utah K-12 schools. For the 2019-20 school year, that distribution will increase over 11% to $82.6 million. This amount is more than 2% of the WPU. Each year, education advocates work to increase the WPU. How can we work for this funding? The best way is for local boards to oversee the program and make sure that the schools and the district are following state code and state school board rule. Local school boards are the adjudicator and protector of these funds that are intended to benefit the public school children of Utah in perpetuity. Local boards have some key responsibilities in Utah Code and Utah State Board of Education rule regarding school community councils. The first responsibility is to provide training for all school community council members and for your local board of education members. Read and approve the school improvement plans and the school land trust plans. Assure compliance with state law and state board rules. Provide information and data to school community councils so they may complete their work. This would include budget information, assessment data, and other information that could help the councils as they review school improvement needs and critical academic needs at the school. Local boards are responsible for an annual report to councils related to digital citizenship and internet filtering. Local boards are also responsible to disperse the funds to schools and to assure they adhere to their school land trust plans that have been approved. And finally, local boards approve election timelines for the schools. A best practice that is not currently required is for local boards to take time in October to either review or have their staff review and present the final reports. This will help you know if the goals are being met if the funds are being spent as approved, and if measurable academic improvement is happening at the schools. Local boards assure that training is provided for themselves and all council members. The training must occur before the school plans can be approved, and the date of the training for boards and councils must be provided annually to the State Board of Education School Children's Trust section. A best practice is to make sure that the local councils receive their training before they begin to plan for the next year. The beginning of the school year is a good time for this. School community councils 
have important work including the School Improvement Plan, the School Land Trust Plan, the Digital Citizenship Review, and remember, the Council acts as an advisory committee to the local board. Local boards are approving entities. Local boards determine the due date of the plans. The plans come to the local boards first for their approval, and then the local board will either read and approve the plan or ask that the plan be amended by the council so that it can be submitted to the School Children's Trust section before May 15th. When reviewing plan expenditures, remember that the expenditures should be used for data-driven and evidence-based practices and services. Local boards and districts may not require a council to spend funds on a specific use. And a council may spend no more than $7,000 on civic and character education, including leadership development and digital citizenship training. Those items should be part of a measurable academic goal. If behavioral programs and interventions are included in the plan, they must also be part of a measurable academic goal. The local board should make sure that the money is being spent to meet critical academic needs and that it directly impacts the instruction of students and improves academic excellence. Every year, the principal is required to allow members of the council to acknowledge that they had an opportunity to participate in the creation of the School Improvement Plan and the School Land Trust Plan. This is done with a signature form. The principal may choose a digital signature form, which actually sends out emails that each member of the council can respond to, or a hard copy version that is physically signed and then uploaded on schoollandtrust.org. If the district chooses, they can set which version they prefer, and they can also create their own downloadable version. This signature form should be reviewed with the upcoming year plan to ensure that all have the opportunity to participate. And the signature form has the same due date as the upcoming year plan. Please remember and remind principals that only one of the two options may be selected. Once they begin down a path with the digital signatures or with the phys physically signed and uploaded form, if they choose the other path as well, it will delete important information that has already been saved on the website. Many schools find they need to make an amendment to their plan. The important questions for district and boards to ask is, has your council reviewed the amendment and would it be allowed in a school and trust plan? It needs to be voted on by the council entered on schoollandtrust.org, and then approved by the local Board of Education. Then it will be reviewed for compliance to state board rule and state code by the School Children's Trust section. Fall reporting is required to be complete by October 20th. These reports include council membership, the principal assurance document that deals with election requirements and website requirements, and the final report. A best practice is for districts to review these reports to make sure that council membership meets the statutory requirements, that the elections and that the website are also meeting the requirements, and that the plan was implemented as approved with the funds spent as planned and carryover not exceeding 10%. These reports are entered on schoollandtrust.org and will be reviewed for compliance by the State Board of Education School Children's Trust section. One area where many schools are not in compliance is with the state code responsibilities for what needs to be on each individual school website. Always updated on the school website should be a list of council members with their name and contact information, a meeting schedule for the year, a report to parents on how the school and trust funds were used in the prior year and what was achieved, the council's rules of order and procedure, a chart showing the dollar amounts received each year, and opportunities for parents to serve on the council and how they can directly influence the expenditure of these funds. 
One week prior to a school community council meeting, the website of the school should be updated with a notice of the meeting listing the time, place, and date, the meeting agenda with action items clearly identified, and draft minutes from the previous meeting. Minutes for the meetings must be retained for three years, but they are not required to be saved on the school's website. The state uses the minutes to verify that things are being properly discussed, that they are listed on the agenda, and that action items are voted on. Local boards should review minutes as well. All votes should be documented in the minutes. Any budget decisions should be in the minutes. Any amendments should be in the minutes. And attendees, those excused, and a roll call vote of all votes should be included. District staffs are incredible and do an amazing job supporting local boards. They can assist with development and implementation of school community council training. They can help preview the plans, amendments, and final reports and work with the councils to get them prepared for board review. They can develop and assure that the signature pages are signed. And they can provide school community councils with data and information needed to develop strong academic plans. Another thing that district staff does is they provide online assurance that council members and local board members have received training annually. And they work closely with the School Children's Trust section in our annual compliance reviews. The management of funds will generally be done by the district business manager for schools with approved plans. If the expenditures don't match the plans, it's not just a school problem. The district is also non-compliant. A best practice includes having someone at the district who is familiar with each school's plan to review and approve expenditures before they're made. Also, district staff will reallocate the annual distribution, taking into account boundary changes and enrollment growth so the funds can follow the students. Some suggested best practices include having the district staff and local board review the final reports that are submitted in October. This includes checking to make sure that expenditures were consistent with those outlined in the plan and that the outlined action plans led to academic goals being met. Districts and district staff should also encourage councils to review their land trust plan budget throughout the year and make sure the money is being spent accurately and according to plan. And councils should be encouraged to review the current year plan as it's being implemented and not just fo focus on the next year's plan. The School Children's Trust section has partnered with the Assessment and Accountability Department of the State Board of Education to work on a training that helps councils understand the implementation and innovation cycle of planning. This will help councils identify needs using data, plan to meet those needs and implement those plans, assess whether those needs have been met, and then analyze and understand the implementation to see how it could be done better as they prepare to identify needs for the next year. This training is available on schoolandtrust.org. It's about two hours long, and so it's not for everyone, but it is broken up in little parts so that a council can view the, the section about using data to identify needs before they begin their planning. Other best practices for local board members include examining where school community council money is being spent. If you see an expenditure that is consistent across schools, your board may want to consider whether that is something that should be covered in the annual budget. Local board members can also visit councils in their board area each year and encourage councils to give input on board study items. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us by email or by phone, or to view the additional materials on our website, schoollandtrust.org. We appreciate the great things that the districts are doing in our state and are grateful to be able to partner with you in your success. 
please let us know how we can help or make this easier. Thank you.